with a uh, good friend of mine, Lauren Bond, radio personality from 97.1 The Point here in Las Vegas, Classic Rock Station. Glad my uh, my first female guest on a drink <laughs> with Derek. Seriously, feel like it should be someone way more important than a DJ. Why do you say that? I don't know. I don't know anybody that's physicist like... Physicist or astronaut. Really? Or, do yeah. I look like somebody who would know a physicist or an astronaut? DJ it is. DJ it is. <laughs> okay. Winner. All right. Well, let's you've been this. in. You've been in the business uh, a long time here in Vegas now for uh, for eighteen years. Mm -hmm. You are, which is a stunner in the broadcast industry. Because Indeed. I was in radio before I did comedy. I was only in for eight years and was in like at like six radio stations over that course of time. I know it's crazy, <laughs> but uh, I mean, you're into you're huge into uh, thrift store shopping. You had to come right off the top with that. Well, I did because that's, I know that's one. That's something that you're really into. So I, I am. I'm just thinking that coming from a broadcast background in as many years as you've been, in, how long have you been in radio altogether? Thirty two. Thirty two years. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that you, you love thrift store shopping because you just are constantly thinking you're going to get fired and you need to figure out a way to get cheap clothing. It's that a little bit of that, but it's also just a little bit of that. But it's also because, hey, kids, if you think radio is going to pay you a lot of money and you're going to get rich, no. 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 I just don't get paid a lot. That's, that's the nature of the industry. Yes. Yeah. No, I just, I, I like to recycle. I like to get out there and find funky stuff. And and I'm a DJ. And you never know when the next paycheck's going to come. So. Well, what was the thing that we were talking about before? As a radio, as a, in radio, you don't, uh, you don't buy a house. No, you don't buy houses. No. You buy luggage. You buy luggage. And if you can find a really cute uh, vintage set, like I did with your girlfriend uh -huh. a couple weeks ago. Right. We found a great set of vintage luggage, and I thought, oh, I need that. It's a lot cheaper than buying a house, and I can afford it. I mean, like like vintage, like old luggage. Yeah, like, old luggage. Like stuff on the Titanic where it was like, <laughs> like these trunks that were loaded up uh, not with. Not quite so severe. Not quite, not quite yeah. that vintage. Yeah, not that vintage. Like you loaded it up on a stagecoach kind more, of vintage. No, if I'm going to okay. be out on the road, I want to look funky and cool. All right. Yeah, so. A little more like 70s retro, yeah, 60s yeah, retro. Yeah, I like to do that. Or anything that I can find in a thrift store that I think has some sort of value for a couple of bucks. What's oh, the okay. what's the what's the best purchase you ever had at a thrift store? Ooh, a pair of five hundred and twenty five dollar boots that had never been worn that I had actually been eyeballing online. I got them for nineteen bucks. Wow! Yes, that's I impressive. Have them to this day, yeah. Here in Las Vegas. Here in Las Vegas. Score, 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 score. That's impressive. Yeah. What have you bought that you took home and you went? I should really kill myself for this. Most of all of it. Okay, cool. Pretty much most of all of it. So it the, goes right into the garage, into a, a space that I have dubbed Hastyville. Hastyville? Hastyville. I just take it home because I don't want anyone else to have it. Because it might be cool. Then I get home and realize it's not cool. And it just gets recycled right back to the thrift store. So you take it right back to the thrift store? Not right back. I might take it to a different thrift store. Are you laundering? You don't want to look like... <laughs> laundering Are you thrift. laundering? Are you laundering thrift store stuff? <laughs> Of all you the know? businesses you can get into in Las Vegas, <laughs> you're laundering thrift store merchandise? <laughs> I guess I, I am. I'm just borrowing it for a minute. I'm renting it. I'm, I'm renting cheap crap that I don't <laughs> want and then taking it back to another thrift store. Do you think that they communicate with each other? They go, hey, did that, that Lauren Bond freak show up and drop off those shorts? Yeah. <laughs> That she bought last that week. That she bought last week? Yeah. Okay, you know, I was cool. just hoping for a different set of staff. You know, if I go in on a different day, maybe they won't know. Because thrift stores are known for their <laughs> huge staffs. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just hey, listen. four people <laughs> that like, rotate the shit. Okay, all right. Listen, I just, if you're going to, you know, maintain a certain level with your uh, reputation. Right. You know, okay, so thrift stores are my crowd. Thrift stores work. Yeah. <laughs> Been in radio a long time. You met a ton of people, mm -hmm. musicians, uh, you know, just a, a cool people, maybe physicists or astronauts that maybe you could have hooked me up with <laughs> to interview, but you didn't. Highly unlikely. Who was the, who did you meet that you actually were at a loss for words when you met them? In terms of like an idol where you met them and you were just jaw dropped. Jaw dropped? I would have to say uh, Perry Farrell. Okay. Perry Farrell was one of those, you know, I mean that, I met him at a time when you know Jane's addiction was huge, right? And uh, I had heard some horrible things about him, and that he wasn't a pleasant person, and he actually turned out to be a really great guy. And we became friends, and uh, I liked him very much. And he was just uh, 
at, at first though, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's Perry Farrell. I yeah. mean, he was one of them. I just, right. I think he stands out because he was so very kind. Right. He was so approachable. He was just a really cool dude. Yeah. And I had heard that he was not, but he was cool to me. That's cool. Yeah. He was really, you know, and I was just, I thought he was very creative. He was uh, at the top of his game. And uh, I just I just thought the way his mind worked was really cool. And for to, for me to be able to spend time with him, mm -hmm. I felt like, yeah, okay, this is awesome. Yeah, loved for, him. Yeah, for for me, I was in when I was in radio. Uh, I met Rush, <laughs> Alex Lifeson, and Getty Lee. Yes, and they are legendary. But of course, it's going to be Rush because they were awesome. <laughs> every guy loves Rush. Yes. No girl loves Rush. There are no, no. You don't see, you, Their seldom. Their concerts are a sausage fest. It's, it is. It is. It yeah. is it's a sword fight. It is definitely. From row one to row double Z in the upper deck. <laughs> it is. I got to tell you, I went to a show with Rob Thomas on the same night that Rush was playing here in Las Vegas. And I was kind of forced into going. I was doing my friend a solid. Okay, I'll go to the Rob Thomas show. Matchbox so was he, which, was he with Matchbox 20 at the time? No, no, he wasn't. It was just him at the pool at the Red Rock. Okay. And there were, you know, quite a few women there. Right. Because they all love Rob Thomas. Yeah. And there were some of them with their spouses. And you could tell that they'd much rather be at the Rush show that was going on on the strip that very night. I'm like, these guys are going to get laid tonight. <laughs> we're going to get it tonight. They were just, you know, take it one for the team. Right. They know what you know how to do it. I know. So yeah, of course. You're Rush. right though. You're right though. That is, it's a complete dude fest at those <laughs> at, a, at a Rush show. Yeah, and for you to any guy to go there and think that they're going to find a chick, but any guy that goes to a Rush show, they love Rush. They don't care about chicks. Chicks become like non-existent right. to them because it's Rush. Now, if you're a woman who says they can't meet a guy, then suck it up. Even if you don't care for Rush, go to a Rush show. Go to a Rush show. Uh, yeah. I there mean, just a numbers game. You've got 18,000, 19,000 dudes there. Yeah. You, it's, I you think can it's, get a phone number. I think it's brilliant. I mean, come on. Yeah, you, you can definitely get a phone number, but you're going to have to wait till like an you know intermission or maybe after the show or in between songs because right. Rush fans are rabid. Yeah, you've got to get that, that one part. And you can't even say the drum solo because the drum solos are amazing. So you can't, yeah, yeah you can't really say that. I can't that, tell uh, you. I'm not a Rush fan. I'm a chick. I would. <laughs> They're incredible. <laughs> They are great. They are great. It's just not... I gotcha. <clears throat> now, who did you meet that you thought was the biggest... That let you down? Uh, Lenny Kravitz. And I was a really? huge fan of Lenny Kravitz. Loved him. So when was... Was this here in Las Vegas? Or was this at another job that you were at? This was at another radio station in Santa Barbara. And he had a show at the Santa Barbara County Bowl. And he was very, very late. Very late. Probably almost an hour late. And I needed to interview him before he went on. Right. So he finally shows up. We're backstage. Uh, he wants to uh, take a shower and get stoned before he goes out there. And I'm pissed because it's already late. He's late to be on stage. And he's got to take a shower and get stoned? These are two things that you do before you leave the house. So we got in a little bit of a tiff. There's already, you know. So he's late. He's already not. He's, yeah. Happy that he's got to be talking to a radio personality right, right before interview. he goes on stage. Right. Okay. Because he wants to take a shower, get and stoned, get and get on stage and right. go do his thing. So we do the interview, and I said, okay, we're cool. Uh, all I need you to do is sign this uh, Flying V. He's like, I don't do autographs. What was, the, uh, what, was <laughs> the, what was the Flying V? What was it for? It was for a radio promotion that we had set up through his management and okay. had been ongoing, and we had been signing people up to win this guitar for several weeks leading up oh, to the Oh, yeah, concert. so you're promoting the whole thing. Exactly. See Lenny Kravitz here and yeah. blah, blah, blah. And, and you can register to win this front one. row seats or whatever. And exactly. then uh, autographs flying the guitar. Line right. So uh, he, he just says, I don't do autographs. I'm like, well, that's funny because your management sitting right next to you has agreed to this and we need to get this on. We need to do this. So he spoke with his manager briefly, you know, in the ear, blah, blah, blah. Takes the so, for, so for the two seconds that it would have taken him to sign yes. this, he's going to lean over and talk to his manager. Yeah. It's just an autograph, dude. So he snatches the Sharpie, he signs the Flying V, and then throws it, throws the Sharpie, and it just happens to be coming in my direction. I catch the Sharpie in my fingers. I've never been able to catch anything in my life. It was just one of those days when it's just stealth. 
cut it and threw it back, and I was done with him. And I was always a huge fan, but what a dick. He threw a Sharpie at he you. He threw a Sharpie and in you, my general direction. And then you threw it back at him. And I threw it back at him, and I said, you're a fucking dick. Oh, sweet. And that was the end of my did time he, with... Did he... <laughs> so how did the date end? <laughs> um, hopefully he got his shower and he got stoned, but he definitely put on a great show that night. Right. I was out there. I was just bitter and angry, and to this day, I love his music. He's a great musician, right. but what a douche. But that memory is going to stick in your head. Always. Whenever Forever. Forever. Anytime somebody's going to ask you a Forever. question like this, that's going to be the first Forever. thing that pops into your head. Absolutely. So it's, it, it, I thought that was the douchiest thing I've ever come across right. with a musician. So, What's the nicest thing that, you, that, that a music, musician has ever done? I mean, was there just anything that sticks out about... Uh, Around me? Someone, yeah, or someone that you met, or, uh, or whether you know, it was in an interview, or just through a backstage know, encounter or anything? You know, I think um, Bonnie Raitt. She wasn't really our genre, the, right. the station I was working at, but I had a little interview with her, and we were walking down um, Sunset and, in Hollywood, and she stopped the interview to talk to a homeless person and uh, buy them a meal. She, we were in front of a restaurant. She called into the restaurant uh, to get one of the servers to come out, and she purchased a meal for this homeless person. Was that uh, Michael Anthony from Van Halen, who is <laughs> actually, currently unemployed? Actually, I think okay. it was Nikki Six. He it was, was Nikki Six. out in front of that restaurant. <laughs> On Sunset? Seriously? Oh, yeah. And his stupid license plate that says six, you know, or whatever it was. You're just oh. Like, really? He was in between bands. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah but, that's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But I thought she was very kind. I mean, in after 32 years, you, you meet a lot that are, you know, Rob Halford, I think, is one of the kindest, funniest, right. most. From Judas Priest, yeah. Yes. One of the funniest guys. And just so kind and so easy to talk to. And right. just really doesn't take anything serious. I, he's a standout for me. There's just certain... Stevie Nicks has always been really cool. Mm -hmm. um, she talks a lot. She's a hard worker, but she is very generous and very forthcoming with... Uh, you know, th I mean, the list goes on and on oh, sure. after all these years, but those are some of the standouts for who was the It's dude. cool seeing some legendary people yeah. that you mentioned, yeah. such as Stevie Nicks and Bonnie Raitt, of course. Yeah. Her. Uh, yeah, she wasn't really our genre at the time. You know, I saw... But she's know, still an iconic musician. Right. And she's brilliant at what she does. She is, so yeah, so it's great to hear uh, yeah. those good interactions, like even with Rob Halford from Judas right. Priest and stuff like that, right. too. Now, one of the things you've got, obviously, in radio, you're in the studio, you got to deal with uh, listeners calling in <laughs> and so forth. And this is, I mean, I've been the removed from the radio business now for, God, it's got to be 25 years now. But you so, know enough about how this works. But I know enough works. about how this how this works. So what's the what's the oddest thing when a listener calls you up? Because for the most part, listeners don't call in. They just li they enjoy the radio station mm -hmm. and they move on with their day. But some are excited, yeah, and want to call you. They do want to call, and usually, and I mean, this is Las Vegas. A lot of times, right. they can be um, well into happy hour <laughs> by the time. They get to me. Yeah, exactly. Tink. Um, so a lot of times they will call and um, they've had a few, maybe a few too many, and they will continue to uh, tell me their life story. And then usually it leads to something very sad, maybe a, a recent death in the family or a loss of a job. And then they want to ask me to play a song that has absolutely... For the, for the dead person. For the dead person. Okay. Which is, I don't know how Lola applies to the, for the kinks. <laughs> yes. They'll ask for a random... You're like, hmm. You either wonder about the person that has passed away, or maybe there wasn't a death at all, and they're just using a death to, to get, get a request. song. <laughs> and I'm thinking, because Lola, or, you know, a Van Halen song, uh, you know, Panama. Yeah, I would, unless the di dying person was a cross-dresser, like Lola. I... I, I and then I don't ask because it's then, seriously none of my business. Yeah, then it's just yeah. way too much information. Yeah. Because already, you know, they've lost their job. Their dog ran away. Uh, the, someone has recently died. The house burned down. And they want to hear Lola. And you're like, okay. You should absolutely then play them Lola and quit being so damn insensitive. <laughs> I probably should. Lauren Bond. Ninety-seven won the point. Where can people find you on uh, on the interwebs? Uh, they can find me at uh, Lauren Bond, my actual name for Facebook. L O R R I N uh, Bond, like James. Got it. And then Logibo 
at uh, Instagram. Or you can also look up Lauren Bond. I think it works that way. And I don't do Twitter because... And she doesn't do autographs either. So if you got a guitar for her to sign, she's not signing it. Yeah. Talk to her manager. I'll throw something at you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me get. To, let me. Yeah. Let, let, let me let pen. you reenact. I feel mad. There you go. Uh, eh. That's a good sharpie. <laughs>